<laughs> oh yeah. Hey guys, we're heavy haul in this episode. So for those of you that may not have put this together already, we have a 2024 Chevrolet Silverado 3500 HD. This particular one is a crew cab, eight foot bed, single wheel. You can get this particular pickup in a bunch of different instances, especially whenever you get into the HD stuff. You know, you can get dualies, you can get the 6.6 Duramax and everything. However, the thing that really drew me to this particular one is now GM offers a 6.6 .6 liter gas engine with a 10 speed Allison transmission. Now I know, I know, I know this is all over the interwebs out there. It's not an actual Allison. Well, actual Allisons haven't been around for quite a while. They kind of got absorbed by GM quite a while ago. But now GM makes Allison branded transmissions and they're built to those specs. So yes, it's not an Allison like pure breed, but for all intents and purposes, it's an Allison. So this is about as rock solid of a gas pickup truck that you're going to find. And for what I do, I can't justify the diesel, the price and or the maintenance. I mean, if you guys know me, I'm a diesel guy. I mean, I worked on semi trucks half of my professional career, but for me personally, gas man it's the way to go anyway i'm rambling here what we're doing today is we're installing a b and w underbed flip ball gooseneck hitch and i feel like the bang for your buck and the usability and versatility this thing is the way to go not to mention b and w is like the snap-on of hitches like it doesn't get any better these guys are the creme de la creme they rise to the top whenever it comes to aftermarket hitches for trucks so this guy is a 30,000 pound rated gooseneck hitch. It's got a two and five sixteenths ball. And like I said, it flips. So it doesn't take up any space in your bed. This thing will invert 180 degrees and go perfectly flat. So you can still slide sheets of drywall and OSB and stuff in here and use your truck for the intended purpose. And one of the biggest reasons other than the name why I went with BMW is they have something that they call a companion fifth wheel. It's made specifically to go with this gooseneck setup. So in the event you want to pull a fifth wheel, like a, a camper or travel trailer, whatever you need to do, whether it's a gooseneck, a fifth wheel, a bumper pull, whatever. But this companion hitch has like a tang that hangs out from underneath it and it indexes into your gooseneck hitch that's already in your truck. So whenever you're not using your fifth wheel, you can take it out and all you're left with is the flat bed because the gooseneck is underneath. Oh man, I know I'm rambling, but I'm jazzed about this project and I wanted to bring you guys along. So without any further ado, let's rip into this stuff and see what it's all about. So guys, like I mentioned, I know I sound like a broken record. This is the B&W flip ball for this truck. And yeah, they kind of span different years and sub models and yada, yada, yada. But if you have this truck, spare yourself the research. I've done it for you. This particular thing is a kit. You have the actual hitch itself, like where the ball goes. This is a GNR C920 and it is paired with the hardware kit, like the rails and everything to keep it together. That is a GNR M1020. So this is the set that you want. And now this is just the hardware stuff. The wiring and stuff is separate, but we'll get to that. And in case you guys are wondering, I'll link all this stuff in the description so you can get it for yourself. I got this stuff from eTrailer.com. I am not endorsed. I am not sponsored by eTrailer, but I have used them in the past and they are just an excellent company to work with. They are reasonably priced, I mean, right across the board. And in the event that you find something cheaper, they will refund the amount that you overpaid plus 10%. Like, dude, eTrailer is absolutely awesome. It's fast shipping, it's good shipping, and it's good quality products. They're just good people, and I want to give them a shout out. So like I said, all this stuff will be in the description if you're interested. So this guy here, the main hitch body, and your big mamma jamma 2 and 5 16 ball. Now, this is one of the things that separates B&W from the other ones, like uh, Kurt or Reese or some of the other ones out there. 
BNW uses a square shank on their ball. The Kurt version of this hitch, uh, yes, it's good. I'm not saying it's not, but it's not a BNW. I mean, whenever you come to pulling 30,000 pounds down a road, do you really want to you know, save yourself 200 bucks or do you want to get the best that you can get? Either way, this square shank thing here, this is a B&W thing because, like I said, this is made to index with their companion fifth wheel. So that keeps all the wiggle out of the waggle, so to speak. The cart is a round ball. Either way. We have that. We have our massively oversized chain down loops that are spring loaded. You'll see how all this goes together. The release lever. And then the actual body of the hitch. This is the part, well, I mean, the whole thing's going to be under the bed, but this is the meat and potatoes here. This is where the ball actually indexes. So this is the chunk that you're going to see sticking through the bed, but that's it. It's just this round part. That's all you're going to see. And like I said, this thing flips, goes upside down, and then it's flat, totally flat on top of your bed. Now, this guy here is your jigsaw puzzle. This is all the components that you need to put together. So these four big giant brackets, I mean, this is quarter inch iron. This is good stuff. I mean, good quality on the welds. It's powder coated. It's just heavy, man. It makes you feel like you're installing something quality here. But these are the four brackets or gussets, if you will, that sit on top of the frame rails underneath the bed. And then the cross beams will go into here that eventually lock into this thing. But uh, I'm not going to drag you through unboxing here. Let's get everything out and start putting it together. All right, so here we have it. We have our four brackets, our two crossbars. These guys are like backing plates for the bolts. So uh, whenever everything tightens down, it has a little more meat behind it. We have our instruction booklet. I believe this is, uh, I don't know, something else that comes in it. Maybe a warranty packet. And then a whole bunch of real meaty grade eight hardware. And it's just, man, look at these freaking things. That bolts the size of your thumb. Like it's, it's good stuff. Now, in case you guys are wondering why I'm doing this, I mean, other than just bringing you guys along for a project, this thing is still relatively new, at least at the time of this video. And the only stuff that's out there is professionals and shops and garages with 10,000 pound four post lifts and everything. I have not seen anybody put one of these things in on the floor of their residential garage or the floor jack and jack stands like the regular old Joe, like you and I. So either way, let's uh, get into the instruction booklet and start tearing this thing apart. I know the first thing we have to do is get this thing up off the ground to allow a little egress for our dad bod in there. We have to drop the spare tire and take down a couple heat shields, maybe uh, remove a couple exhaust brackets just to push that big giant muffler out of the way. But honestly, this is rather straightforward. This will probably be about the fifth or sixth gooseneck that I've put in, and it honestly can't be much different than the ones I've done in the past. But either way, let's get to wrenching. So we might as well start things off here with the spare tire. And in case you guys are unaware, it's this little round cap here next to your license plate. And this takes a little key. It's a security thing, so nobody steals your spare tire and runs off with it. But in case you guys don't know, on these newer fobs here, since you don't actually use a key anymore, there is a hole in the side of there. You depress this, the key comes out of the bottom of your fob. So this is the guy you need to undo this. Just get in there, quarter turn to the right, and this plug comes out. That gives you access to put your jack tool in there and unwind the spare tire. Now we got to dig in the cab and try to find that junk. Now that we got our awesome uh, handy dandy junk freaking stock tire bar things. I'm going to put these together. So you got the two long ones, square drive on the end. That'll go in and you'll feel it index with the winch up there. Then you put your handle on here. Wind her down. And in case you guys are wondering, do you need to do this step? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do because with an HD truck, you get a full size spare tire. So this thing is freaking enormous sitting under here. So you need to make sure that you get it the heck out of the way so you can actually get in there and work. Oh, oh sweet Moses. Yes. Oh boy. See, yeah. hey, I wasn't lying. Full size spare. That's a big mamma jamma. 
Well, I suppose now I'll bring you in under here so you can see what's going on. And uh, I'm debating whether I need to jack this thing up or not. I mean, with the spare tire out, there is actually quite a bit of room under there. <laughs> like so many of you guys, I would absolutely kill to have a bigger garage. But uh, what are you going to do? Either way, let's uh, throw us a work light in there so we can see what the heck we're doing. Now... I very well may be in the way for most of this stuff. But like I said, we're gonna deal with what we have. So you guys can tell here, pretty decent amount of room here. This heat shield needs to be removed just to give us access to the exhaust and everything. That one will be reinstalled. There is another one right here. That guy needs to come out and it stays out because the hitch is gonna go there. So uh, yeah, let's get to doing that. All right, good guess. 13 mil, guys. Well, I tell you what, very rarely do you get the awesome privilege to work on a brand new vehicle. But man, it is absolutely life changing. Not one little bit of rust fell in my eyeball taking that bolt out. Whew, man, what a world we're living in. Now, please excuse me if the audio is all over the place, but uh, the microphone's on my shirt here, and I'm rolling all over the floor. So, uh, I suppose it kind of is what it is. But yeah, these are 13 mils also. I gotta go get a ratchet for that. I need a wrench. Man, it's almost as if GM put that on before they did the bed. Now there's just one last one that's clean up here over the cross member that mounts on the fuel tank. Oh, yeah, hopefully this is the worst part of this project. <laughs> Now that we've sufficiently given ourselves carpal tunnel in the first part of this project. Yeah, got this heat shield. Cool. Pile that with the real important stuff because we're not going to be using that again. Now, let's get up top and start doing some pre-assembly to make the underneath version easier. Well, guys. Looking through the book here. Step one, remove spare tire and shield. Got it. Remove that other heat shield that you break your wrist doing. Got it. On to the next step. Drill the hole. Now, I don't know if you guys get the same anxiety just watching this as I do thinking about it. Brand new glory, pride and glory of GM. And we're slamming a four inch hole right in the middle of it. <laughs> This is gonna be like a measure six million times. Cross your fingers and toes and pray and cut once. It's, like I said, I've done this many times before. They all work out. It doesn't make it any less nerve wracking. But this particular kit is good for short beds and long beds. This one being an eight foot bed. And it says right here, eight foot long bed, 45 and 5 sixteenths. Now that is from this back ridge back. So you stretch your tape right in the lip here and go back. However, there is a caveat here that you need to pay attention to that's not exactly thrown out in the instructions, at least not nearly as bluntly as I feel it should. If you guys have a spray on bed liner, whether it be the factory one that comes with it or aftermarket line X or whatever, you need to account for the thickness of that liner on this rear edge. Now, I'm not talking it's a quarter inch or something, but anywhere between a sixteenth and an eighth, somewhere around there. So with the measurement here in the book at 45 and 5 sixteenths, I suggest we either go 45 and 3 eighths or possibly even 7 sixteenths because of the thickness of this liner. 
I think I'm going to hedge my bet and do the difference there and go with 45 and 3 8. It's just a skosh over the measurement that they call out in the book. But, I mean, you can see here on the edges where the liner ends. Yeah, yeah, give or take, let's just call it a sixteenth of an inch thick. So I feel comfortable with that number. Let's get up in the bed and do some marking with a paint marker. Now, guys, like I mentioned, this is an eight-foot box. So if you have a different bed, pay attention to the measurement for yours. But mine is an eight foot. So we're going with that 45 and 5 sixteenths plus a sixteenth of an inch for the thickness of the bed liner on the end here where the tape is clipped. So we're going right here on the center rib, right down the middle. We're going to go 45 and 5 sixteenths plus a sixteenth to give us 45 and 3 eighths. Now, as far as the side to side goes, it tells you in the book, just measure between the wheel wells and split the difference. In this case, we have 50 and 3 eighths. So we are gonna do 25 and 3 sixteenths. And it just so happens, our little nub is right on the money there. So I'm as comfortable with that as I am going to be. Double and triple check our measurements from a couple different points here, just to accommodate for the varying thickness of the bed liner there. 45 and 3 eighths. 45 and 3 eighths. 25 and 3 sixteenths. 25 and 3 sixteenths. Well guys, next step, grab yourself your favorite drill and a four inch hole saw and plug a hole through your brand new truck. Well guys, here goes nothing. We got our four inch hole saw, quarter inch pre-drill, and uh, I've got a little bit of tap magic cutting fluid to help the medicine go down. So either way, we've got this thing in dead slow so we can start the pre-drill here. Make sure you get this thing dead nuts where you want it. Because if your pre-drill is off, the whole thing is going to be off. So take your time with this process. I'm just going to start a little bit of a pilot measure again. Why not? We've got all the time in the world. This is a process we do not want to rush. 45 and 3 eighths. Dead smack in the middle of that hole. 25 and 3 sixteenths, 25 and 3 sixteenths, I don't know about you guys, but uh, it's time to go drilling. All right, now we're through. I suggest starting this hole saw in reverse. That way it'll score the bed liner and this thing's not hopping all around on you. Give yourself a little bit of cutting fluid. Start in reverse just to get our notch started. Good, we're through the liner. Now we'll spin it around to forward and finish the cut. And here we are, fellas. A snazzy four inch hole right in the middle of your new truck. So guys, I just got me a half round rasp here. Do our best to clean this up a little bit. I mean, we're only helping ourselves here. Now, I just got myself a wee little jug of Rust-Oleum here. 
Now, keep in mind, we're not going for pretty. We're going for protection. So just coat that up real good. Get all those rough edges. Happy little truck bed. No, there are no mistakes. Now, keep this paint around. We're going to need that later. Well, guys, now that the heart attack portion of this thing is over, we can start pre-assembling some of the stuff that's go up underneath. That's yeah, funny. Just looking through the instructions here a little bit further. Failure to cut the hole in the correct location may adversely affect the install and may result in property damage. <laughs> you mean like throwing your drill through the back window because you're so mad? <laughs> anyway, now that that's done and out of the way, the rest is just putting nuts and bolts together. So I suppose I might as well bring in in so you can see it a little bit better. So we're going to start with assembly of these cross tubes here. Now you see here that this is a welded square tube. We want the weld on the bottom. And I took note while I was under there, the egress of everything. I know that we're going to have to tighten this hardware to spec at some point. And the best way that we can try to reach everything with a torque wrench, put the hardware in from the front, like the bolts coming from the front of the truck so the nut is facing the tailgate. That way you have a much better chance of getting to the nut while you're under there with the torque wrench. So we're gonna go ahead and do both of these and only install one end bracket on either. So that way we can weasel it up in underneath the truck and then we'll put the second one on while it's under there. This is pretty self-explanatory. Like, only some bolts are long enough to do this. It's really difficult to mess it up. So like I mentioned, we are not tightening anything yet. Because from past experience, I know getting these holes in the top of the frame rail and the factory rib nuts can be difficult to locate. Not to mention they're almost impossible to get your hand in there in between the frame rail and the bottom of the bed. So if we leave this thing loose, leave some wiggle in it, it makes this whole thing go a lot better. It'll help us locate the receiver into the hole in the bed. It'll help us get these bolts in and it'll help us wiggle everything together. Once we have the bolts all in and loose, then we can go through and systematically tighten everything. But we're gonna go ahead and start with this one with the bracket on the left-hand side because this has to go up over the fuel tank and then we can rest this side on the exhaust pipe and then weasel the other bracket in. So, uh, we should probably take some off some exhaust hangers to get that thing out of the road just a little bit. And every quarter inch counts whenever it comes to doing this stuff. So we'll pop a couple of those rubber hangers and get this thing up into place. Nice. So if you guys are lucky enough to be doing this on a new rig like myself, these things are still factory greased. It should be a little bit easier to get off than, uh, you know, one that's been on there for 10 years. No, I said easier, not easy. There you go, little buddy. All right. Now that gives us about an inch or so that we can move this thing. All right. Now, like I said, this front bracket needs to go in up like right over the rear of the fuel tank and the side without the bracket we're just going to set on top of the exhaust pipe now you guys will see here this is why i mentioned putting the hardware in the direction that i did because now the nuts are sticking out on this side if they were on the other side there's no way you'd ever get a wrench on that thing but now we have this one sitting in here we can attempt to put the bracket on the other side of this thing and get it up on the frame rail. Now again guys here, I apologize for the lack of adequate view, but uh, I can barely see what I'm doing, let alone getting the camera in here. Come on. 
You know you want it. Ah! All right. Okay. So we have that started. Push it up out of the road. Pay mind to your wiring harness and stuff here, because the one that goes over the fuel tank is a little tight. But yeah, so that's the front one. Now let's bring the bottom one back here. Now this one should hopefully go a little smoother because we're not fighting with the fuel tank on this side. Put the bracket up and over. There you go. Use our head for something other than holding a hat. Bracket. Cool. Now we have that stuff done. Let's get back up, take a look at the uh, instruction booklet again, and we're ready to put in the center section of this thing. But with your bed length, it depends which way that thing goes in. So we really got to read the book. All right, now we're back upstairs and we're talking about the actual pin box assembly. Like I mentioned, this matters the orientation of this thing, whether you have a six foot or an eight foot bed. Like in this case, we have an eight foot box. So it says here for eight foot beds, the installation of the pin assembly and the release latch to be on the driver's side, because this thing is movable, whether you have a six or an eight foot, and the cutout towards the back of the truck for the cross member under the bed. So luckily, the orientation this thing is in right out of the box is for an eight foot. So if you have a six foot, you're gonna need to disassemble this release pin assembly and just move it onto the other side. It's super simple, it's just a couple bolts. But either way, there are a couple bolts that we need to put in here to secure this thing because they leave them out in case you need to change it. So I'll just throw them in real quick. So we've got these two cute little carriage bolts with a square index underneath them. Some flange nuts to capture on the other side and this retains that uh, locking pin assembly. So let's go ahead and throw this together tighten all that stuff down because this isn't going to affect anything so we can just go ahead and tighten these cool that's all there is to it next step is actually throwing this thing up underneath now that's where these come into play so those cross beams that we already have installed underneath the truck these things will go on the outside the cross beam will go in the center the bolt holds this whole thing together this just acts as like an oversized quarter inch washer to distribute the squeeze of this giant hardware. So just keep in mind, whenever you go to put this thing together, in this case with an eight foot bed, we have the handle on the left, the cutout for the cross member in the back. We're gonna put the plate, bolt, cross member, and then through the actual pin box and then secure it with a nut on the back. So uh, this may be a bit of a juggling scenario under there. So forgiveness in advance for not being able to see it well. So this is definitely the part that can get a little sticky. We're going to have to try to hold all this stuff up here at the same time without killing ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-install some of this hardware. but not let the bolt stick through the backside too much. So I still have plenty of egress to get my pin box in there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, pre-install our hardware so it's easier. Once we have everything up in there, we're not gonna have to fight with it as much. Remember that nice big quarter inch plate. We got all that in there. Now comes the fun part. I lift this giant mother in here. Okay, here's 
one. Oh, there's two. Three and four. Whew. Man, I didn't know I was going to be doing shoulders today. Huh. But either way, it's honestly not that terrible. Just take your time with it. Get in front of your problem and pre-do your hardware so you don't have to fight with it nearly as much. And not to mention, when you're doing that, you get the satisfaction of that hitch falling into the hole that you just drilled in the bed. So, you know you nailed it. Sweet. Now we have all those nuts started, not tightened. Nothing on this is tight yet. It's just up there and where it needs to be. The next step is we're going to have to fight through the fender wells a little bit, might have to remove some, and get in there and put the bolts that hold the cross beams into the frame rails of the truck. Now when it comes to doing this part, this is another thing you're not going to be able to see really well, but this is the exact same thing that you do on the opposite side of the truck. There are three T15 screws here. that retain the bottom of this crappy factory felt liner. So your truck may not have this in, thing in here. Then if you don't, honestly, you're lucky. Go on Amazon and buy the Husky plastic ones because these felt ones suck. Either way, remove these things so you can pull it out away from the frame rail and uh, get your meat hooks in there so we can put some hardware in. Now you guys can see here, we don't need to totally remove these things. This gives you enough egress to get in there and get to what we need to do. So. Don't waste your time taking the whole thing out. So now we're back up top at the hardware store. We got these eight giant bolts that go down through those cross beams and into the factory frame rail of the truck. Now, since these things are such a bear to get to, I strongly suggest a ratchet wrench because the chance of you getting a socket in there is slim to none. So whenever it comes to torquing these things, I'm gonna try to use a crow foot on my half inch torque wrench, but you know, using an open end wrench on something high torque like this. Nah, we'll see how it goes. Either way, slam these things in there and get them as tight as you possibly can by hand. And I strongly suggest throwing some blue Loctite on here because I don't know about you. I never want to worry about these things coming loose on me. So I want to make sure that there's something other than just the friction of the mechanical bolt going in the hole. So uh, I'm not going to bother showing you this step because you're not going to be able to see it anyway. There's no way I can get my head and you guys in there. So take my word for it. You're just going to have to struggle and find and locate the hole in the top of the frame rail and put this through that cross beam into it and tighten it down. Alrighty, fellas, that actually went a lot smoother than anticipated. I'll show you now that they're in here. So now that we've removed the bottom of the fender liner, there's the rear bracket and there's the front bracket. But you can see the lack of room that we have in here. So chances of getting a socket and a ratchet are slim to none but they just index with the factory welded nuts in the top of the frame rail and that's it. And this is a big reason why we leave everything loose. So this thing wiggles and we can find the holes and get everything in there. Alrighty guys, now that step is done. And uh, I don't know, arguably the most difficult, not, I don't know, I've said that a lot. But either way, now that all the bolts are in everywhere, the whole thing, now we can go through the sequence of tightening everything. Now, there is something to pay mind to when you're doing this. Those crossbars have to be parallel with each other and perfectly perpendicular to your frame rails. Because, like I said, that companion fifth wheel that goes into this thing sits in indexes in that square hole. Having that square straight is important should you plan on doing that. Nonetheless, you're taking the time to do this, so take the time to do it right. I mean, it's enough of a pain to be under there anyway. Just do it once and be done. So what we're gonna do is kinda like if you've ever installed a head gasket in anything. You start in the middle and work your way out. So those four giant 5 8 bolts that hold the pin box into the crossbars, we're gonna start there, tighten those, zigzag, and then work our way out. So start at the pin box in the center, and then we're gonna do those two end brackets that hold the crossbars onto the frame rails, tighten all those things up. And then the very last thing we're gonna do is those eight bolts that go through the crossbars into the frame rail. So now we just got to weasel our dad bod back under there and physically tighten everything. So we'll bust out the uh, old handy dandy torque wrench here. 
it says here in the booklet that all the 5 8 hardware, the big giant ones, need to be torqued to 150 foot pounds. And the M14 ones, which are the ones that go into the frame rail, need to be torqued to 110. But it also states they realize that you're probably not going to get a torque wrench in between the bottom of the bed and the frame rail. So it says, tighten each M14 bolt as tightly as can be achieved by using hand tools. Do not over tighten for threat of stripping or breaking loose that nut in the frame rail. And don't use a cheater pipe on it. So honestly, I think that uh, that long handle 18 mil I got, that's going to be the ticket. We're just going to reef on that thing until we're happy. But either way, we're going to get under there and see what we can do with this thing about really securing all these. And uh, in case you guys are wondering, the size for that 5 8 hardware, 15 16 So you're going to need a socket, probably short well, uh, maybe deep, I don't know. And then a 15 16 wrench to hold the nut, or the bolt. You know what I mean. Either way, let's do the thing. So we know that we have the pin box in the hole in the bed of the truck because it wouldn't be sitting where it is if it didn't. So we have everything started. We're simply going to go around and systematically tighten everything as best we can. Like I said, we're going to start in the center here and work our way around. You guys can tell I'm cheating here a little bit. Might as well run everything down with a gun, at least the ones that you can get to. All right, we got sunk down what we can with the impact. Now we're gonna go everything with a torque wrench and do the best we can to actually get this stuff. Now here's another thing you guys probably won't be able to see. I'm taking a tape measure here. From this rear cross beam to the closest like bed strut underneath, right behind it, I'm going from the face of that bed strut to the front of this cross beam here. And I got 14 and 11 sixteenths. We're gonna go ahead and check the passenger side here. And I will be a dog's uncle here at 14 and 11 sixteenths. So I don't know if I just got lucky or from tightening this thing up, it squares itself true. But either way, I got myself a, a rigmarole of different hardware here deep shorts, extensions, wobbles, whatever have you. And uh, we're gonna try our best to get those things all torqued down that 150 mark. Huh. Oh my, oh, Sue's EQ, okay. 130, oh, 135, 142, oh, 148, oh, nice, oh, I'm driving my life away, looking for a better way for me, well, YouTube won't let me, uh, have you guys listen to the song so you get to listen to my rendition. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, sweet lord. Whew. Well, guys, that bolt behind the release pin and right on top of the fuel tank is by far the most miserable one to get to. But we are done with the torquing out here. Now we can go do the one on the frame rails. So guys, like I mentioned, and like the book even reiterated, they know you're not getting a torque wrench in here. So grab yourself a long box end wrench or a long ratchet. This guy. And crank these things down with all you got. And let's be honest, 110 foot pounds really isn't much when you're hanging on the end of a 12 inch wrench. So I'm sure that what we're doing here 
is probably right at 110, if not over. Either way, I'm happy with it. I've tightened enough bolts to know that we're right there at 100, if not more. Now all those are tight, you can go ahead and refasten the fender well on the passenger side. But the driver's side, you need to keep open because we're going to have to do some trimming for the handle to come through. So it's just easier to leave it alone for now. Now the next step, we're getting close to the end here, fellas, I promise. we got to get under there and install the release pin handle thing. And we're going to drill some pilot holes for our tie down loops. You now we're gonna start that from underneath and poke a hole up from the bottom so that we know we're dead square in the middle of those. And then we can finish out the full like finish OD up top. Now when it comes to pre-drilling the holes underneath for the safety chain loops, I strongly suggest if you have one of these 90 degree jobs, I feel like that's gonna be a lot easier to try to MacGyver around everything that's going on in there because now that everything's there, it's getting pretty tight. So uh, we'll go up there poke a hole in the center of those four holes for the safety chain loops, and then finish the OD up top. So I got myself here a quarter inch bit and a 90 degree drill. Go up here and center these holes and poke them right through into the bed. Make sure you have your safety squints on when you're doing this. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, right? That's how us dads work. But that's nice. Now that's done. We don't have to do any measuring or anything. We just go up top and uh, finish drilling out those holes. So if you guys are anything like me, you probably don't have an 11 16 drill bit at your disposal because my index ends at half an inch and I have odd sizes like 9 16 3 quarter, 1, whatever. But I do have a uni bit. These things are, uh, well, they can be expensive or you can just run over to your local uh, Hobo Freight and grab up a kit of these for pennies on the dollar. Either way, since we have our starting hole up from underneath, just plug this thing down until it finds its own center in the bracket. Because that pin box, that steel is so thick and heavy, no problem. This thing will just sink right down in there. Now that we've got our four holes slammed in here, uh, let's go ahead and check the fitment of our pins to see if we got to do any zhuzhin. Look at that. Like a glove. Man, honestly, I don't even think they needed to be that big. The book called out for 11 16 so I really don't even think it needed that. But either way, now they're going to move real nice and easy. But either way, this is why I told you guys to keep your Rust-Oleum out. Because we're going to touch these up too. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we're not going for pretty. We're going for protected. I mean... Let's be honest, this is the bed of a work truck. You get a little bit over, who cares? I mean, unless you're really particular about it, you can go get one of those model paint brushes, but I, for one, am not that particular. So, you do you guy, it's your truck. I suppose we could clean that up just a skosh, huh? Yeah, look at that. It's like one you'd buy in a store. Throw these guys in there and go underneath and finish up that hardware. Now for this part guys, it really couldn't be more self-explanatory and not to mention you're not going to be able to see it. So there are these four conical shaped springs. They go on underneath those safety chain loops and then they're just captured by a nut. And these things are like those crimp nuts. So once they're on, they're locked in that position. You don't have to lock tight these. So we're just gonna go up, run these onto the end of the stud. I mean, once I have it in, I'll take you in there so you can see what it looks like finished, but I'm not gonna bother you with trying to look over my fat head physically doing it. So we got those safety chain loops in there. You guys can see here, that's all it is. 
those cone shaped springs go in with the big part facing up and then you capture that 15 16 nut on the bottom and just crank her on until you're happy now the last thing we got to do like i mentioned to you guys earlier the reason that we left that wheel well liner on the driver's side loose is that we got to cut out a little access port so we can actually get in to reach the handle so you do that however you will a whiz wheel a pair of scissors side cutters whatever you need to do but we need to get in there and cut that out same thing i'm not going to be able to get you in there with me but i'll show you what it looks like after now here's what i got for my cutout i understand it's not the prettiest thing in the world but however i got big uh, meat hooks here so it's nice to be able to get my entire hand in there and let's be honest this is about function not necessarily form so now we can go ahead and put these t15s back in tighten everything up so you guys can see from the back of ways heck when you're standing up you can't even see it you really have to get down in there and tell and once i take the light out you probably won't even know well guys now that we have everything functional it's the fun part we actually get to use it the work is done you grab the handle pull it out and just a little turn clockwise so just turn your wrist to the right and it'll lock in the open position now we can put the ball in and this is the cool part about this hitch guys and like well like i said this thing is a square so it doesn't matter which direction it goes whatever but a lot of fifth wheels are or goosenecks i'm sorry are either like this for eternity or you have to physically take them out and then you have a giant hole in the bed of your truck this one flips upside down and it stores in the hitch so it's always here it's always ready to go whenever you need it and so you guys can see the function of our uh, safety chain loops here they're spring loaded so they stay tight into the bed and because of the location of them they're in between the ribs everything that we did is below the factory surface of the bed so you won't have issues sliding plywood and drywall in here well guys grab yourself a beverage and pat yourself on the back this project is all done minus putting stuff back together but i'm not going to bore you with the particulars the heat shield that goes around the spare tire that one goes back in obviously the spare tire goes back in and then clean up your mess and one of the last things that i recommend is with the ball coat that entire thing in grease i mean let's be honest it's a hitch anyway it needs to be greased but if you don't use this thing regularly and you leave it in the stowed position that thing can become seized in there if you don't use it regularly so just slather that thing in grease put it in its hole and cool little extra here another thing i picked up from e-trailer is a b and w ball cap so whenever this thing is flipped in its stow position upside down when the bed is flat this little rubber beauty cap goes over it to keep crud from falling in there and not to mention it just looks nice so guys by all means if you're interested in doing this for your truck check out the links in the description i will list everything all the parts all the part numbers all the links all the tools anything and everything you need now this is a little involved and if you're nervous about blasting five giant holes in the bed of your brand new truck i get that but this is something that's totally doable for you you can do it in your garage in your driveway whatever then the neighbor's house the parking lot whatever this is a totally doable thing for yourself yeah it's involved but take your time measure everything six thousand times before you actually blow holes in it because this is a one and done thing once that four inch hole is in your truck it's in there man so uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this hey and stay tuned i mentioned we're going to do the wiring harness for the gooseneck and everything well this video is getting a little preachy so we're going to do that for a separate video i promise it'll be much faster this is the meat and potatoes of this project but i hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next time